Hello everyone, this is Michael Homer, getting at you from Reproductive Science Center. Um, and I wanted to give you guys an update on COVID-19, a couple of CDC announcements and data releases, as well as the ASRM. Uh, before I get started though, I made this, uh, I think it's a new slogan for RSC. I hope you guys like it. Uh, clearly hand-drawn by me. Um, it's not our like logo slogan yet, but Come on, right, yeah. Okay, so um, I wanted to tell you guys about first uh, a couple of CDC data sets that's been released. And they're important because they give us an insight into how COVID might affect a pregnancy and also who amongst those pregnant patients are being affected the most and why. So the first set we're looking at is, I'm gonna, I also have some data I'm looking at, so I might be, my eyes will be going up and down a little bit, so I apologize for that. Um, but the first part is looking at the vaccine safety data link called VSD, which is a collaboration between the CDC's immunization safety office, as well as uh, 11 US healthcare organizations that cover about 12 million persons each year. Okay. And this is looking at data from March 1st to May 30th. And in that database, they found 105 hospitalized pregnant patients who are positive for COVID-19. Of those 105, 62 were admitted for obstetric reasons, okay? So, but we're looking more at the 43% that were admitted with COVID-19 with symptoms, but no obstetric indications, okay? So these are pregnant women, as best as we can tell, who were admitted because of COVID-19. And so of those 43 women, 30% ended up being admitted to the ICU. 14% of them had to go on a ventilator, and unfortunately, one woman passed away. And so when you, they compared pregnant women with and without symptoms, okay, they found that uh, pre-pregnancy obesity and gestational diabetes was, had a higher prevalence in those women who were symptomatic with COVID-19 i.e. sicker. And this is not new, right? We kind of know that comorbidities increase the risks and the dangers of COVID-19. We think of obesity, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, okay, amongst others, asthma. Um, now, also, when they look at women who are symptomatic with COVID-19, they did see that preterm delivery is also increased, including, unfortunately, stillbirths. So, Baseline preterm delivery during a time period is about 9%. And with those who are symptomatic with COVID, it was increased to 15%. And stillbirths increased from 0.6% to 3.2%. Okay. And so these are low risks, but obviously it's, it's really worth knowing. Um, and, you know, so there's just two little pieces of data. And the takeaway from this is that those with comorbidities can be sicker from COVID-19. Those women who are sicker with COVID-19 have a higher risk of preterm delivery and stillbirth. The main takeaway though is what can we do about it, right? So wash your hands, okay? I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna keep doing this for 20 seconds. You're just gonna keep hearing me doing it for 20 seconds. It's a while, no, let's keep going. I'm gonna keep washing my hands though. You gotta wear a mask, right? Social distancing, okay? Six feet. Also, keep, make sure you get behind the, 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 the fingernails, okay? So, also that you stay away from crowded indoor spaces, okay? Again, mostly though, wash your hands for 20 seconds, wear a mask, okay? Um, we might revisit this, it might be important. Um, the CDC also released another um, set of data. This is from something called COVIDnet. And this is data that's collected on hospitalized pregnant patients, 14 states, okay, 99 counties, between March 1st and August 22nd. They identified 600 women who are pregnant with COVID-19. Now, demographically, it's important to look at this too, because of those 600 patients, 69% of them were Hispanic or black. And of the 69%, we'd say, well, what's the population in that area? Is that, is that you know, about the same as the area? And it's not. 
I don't think that necessarily comes as a surprise, but it was almost uh, the representation of black and Hispanic patients in those pregnant COVID positive patients was almost double what they were in the community. In those communities, about 35% who uh, identify as black or Hispanic, but 69% of those hospitalized were black or Hispanic, showing an overrepresentation. Again, this is consistent with what we know that those uh, people of color uh, or minority groups are unfortunately hit harder and diagnosed more with COVID-19. There's a lot of reasons for this, of course, we don't necessarily have to get into here, but it's worth knowing. Um, also compared to baseline, preterm delivery during that time frame when those with who are pregnant with COVID-19 was found to be about three times higher, okay? And those women who were symptomatic compared to those women who were not symptomatic. And so again, symptom, symptoms matter. And we would know this, right? Because if a woman is, is sick, then you know sometimes the best way to access the airway and to make it better, ventilation, some other factors, is to deliver. Low oxygen, right? L fetal distress. Um, and so there's many reasons why it can lead to preterm deliveries or inductions of labor um, or C-sections, um, but we just, we just know it's there. And so it is a problem, it's something to know. Again, what is the takeaway from this? The takeaway is, I'm not gonna do it for, I'm gonna do it for 20 seconds, okay? I'm just gonna keep going. Just think of how long 20 seconds actually is. Okay, we're about seven seconds right now. Keep going. There's other things you can be doing. You can be thinking about the day, the shopping list if you want to. You know, did you shut the, did you shut the door and the, is the car, is the car light off? I don't know, it's all automatic at this point. I'm just scrambling for ideas. But you're just, or just take the time out. Just think of all these wonderful things that you could be doing while you're washing your hands. World peace, solve it. You know, I mean, we've got time, right? And it's about 20 seconds or so. Okay, so um, keep preventative measures going. There are hot spots in the US. It, it's wildfires, right? It's very apt from coming from California, right? There are wildfires of COVID and people are starting to relax a little bit in some areas, right? It's just, it's just human nature getting sick of it. Stay strong, stay vigilant, wash your hands, wear a mask, okay? Six feet, do your best. Meet people if you need to, outdoors, okay? Keep that distance. Um, and the last thing I wanna to talk to you about was ASRM. So American Society for Reproductive Medicine had an update in September. Um, it didn't have a lot of big clinical uh, updates, but it had a couple interesting ones that are super important. One is just reinforcing to uh, clinics to, to stay vigilant, have a plan. We have a plan, right? I mean, the health, the, the county, um, the health offices, you know, make us have a plan too. And we're very grateful for that. We follow that to a T. And so we make sure that everyone is coming in, is screened, wearing masks. When you come into the lobby, you'll probably be the only one in the lobby, okay? We have big lobbies. So technically we could fit two or three and still maintain distances, but we don't do that. Usually one or two at the most, okay? Um, all personnel seeing you in the clinic, N95 and a face shield, okay? It's great to see me. I'm sitting there, when I come in every room, I'm like, hey, it's Dr. Homer behind the curtain with my masks on. Because I just don't want people, it's just, it's cumbersome, but I feel safer and I think my patients hopefully feel safer in it, a little weirder in it, but that's fine, right? Because it's all for this. Um, and it keeps the patients and the doctors safe, which is idea, and sorry, and all the personnel in the clinic as well. Um, nurses, sonographers, everyone that's super important to help us run. Um, the other thing I think was that the ASRM is encouraging, which I 100% agree, proactively and deliberately address misinformation with patients about COVID-19. I have a blog uh, written about this past month, I believe, reviewing and going over some ways of information, kind of focusing on REI and fertility you know, research um, but also kind of using that as a parallel with COVID-19 and all the misinformation out there. If you see something strange written about the CDC, if you see something strange that's like, oh, conspiracy, question mark, search lateral, open up new tabs, type in that same search back into Google, see what gets hit, okay? Make sure that you broaden your sources past just one. One is not good enough anymore, okay? There's a lot of misinformation about covid and it can lead to really bad outcomes. It's super important, okay? We can't afford that anymore. Um, okay, so that was ending on a good note. 
Um, but, you know, specifically in the Bay Area, RSC, you know, the Bay Area is getting better, right? It was an initial hot spot, but, you know, Contra Costa County and Santa Clara County and all the other counties in the area, SF and everything, have done a really good job at staying vigilant. It's not perfect, but it's getting better, and that's great, okay? All right, so stay healthy, wear a mask, wash your hands, and RSC is open, and I'm, I mean... It's, it's pretty good, right? Yeah. All right. Let's talk to you later. Bye. One more thing I actually forgot to mention is that you have to get your flu shot, ASRM guidelines, okay? Sam is going to help us, or help me, I should say. It's not that hard. Get your flu shot. Bye.